Hello Prime Coders, welcome back to Prime Coding channel. So in today's video, I will be solving Deloitte NLA recent question. Okay, so there is a quick update which is on 30th till 30th gen Deloitte NLA slots has been allocated. So you need to wait. Then only after all slots are done, you can expect your upcoming result. So we'll solve few of the questions which were recently asked. So the very first question that we can see is N is equivalent to 3 and we have array let me change the color so yes n is equal to 3 and we have an array 10 4 6 1 3 5 so output is 2 because my key is there inside my uh, particular array isn't it interesting and i know you most of you were able to figure it out what you need to do if you are able to so pause the screen and try to write the board and for those who are not able to solve this question let's have a try okay so we have an array which is given we have 10 4 6 1 3 5 so what question ask us to do is we need to find our given key which will be given from the question and you just need to fill the body of the function okay so yes i can see 0 1 2 3 4 5 i mark the indexes i can see my 6 is present on my second index of the array okay so this question would be very easy because you just need to use a for loop and you are done. Let, let me give an idea. So let's say this is a function which is given to you in the uh, test. So array and the key would be given to you. Okay. So I'm just writing the pseudo code and I will highly encourage you to write the particular code and let me know in the comment section. Okay. So array has been given to us. So now what I will do, uh, I will just iterate on my array. So for i is zero and it should go till where? the len of array because we need to traverse on everything we'll compare okay i here so i will compare my i is equivalent to this is it if is it then just return true otherwise return false okay so for i len would be array and similarly i will check if my array of i is equivalent to my given key which is coming from the function just return true because question doesn't ask us to return any index or something else. Just return true or false. And after whole array, let's say we came up here and we return our answer. But let's say 6 is not present in the array. So in the last, you just need to return false. So yes, this would be the very easy question which will give you the time complexity of O of N and space. We are not consuming anything. As this question hardly takes two minutes to solve okay so let's hop to the second question so second question is bit tricky but it is also easy you need to do some specific task some number of times and what are these let's see the question first so question we have a as 10 and we have b as 11 okay so the output is 2 how the output is 2 because you need to find the digit sum which is let's say this is a and this is b so for a 10 was there so you need to find the sum of that digit which is 1 plus 0 will give you 1 1 plus 1 will give you 2 after that these results you need to find the product of them so it would be 1 2 and is equal to 2 i hope i hope you got this question and few things that you should take in your mind is they will there will be there will be only two number would be there okay or two element would be there no more than two numbers okay so okay so in the function in the function if i give you a better idea in the function you will get a and b and on top of it you need to solve your question i hope you got till here okay so before completing this function i will try to explain you because this kind of question has been repeated many times if you see the duloid coding solution which i uh, uploaded two days back same number question was there just new thing that they introduced which is product of the results okay so how you can find the digit sum but that would be the first case so let's say we have n equivalent to 10 okay let's say we have an n equivalent to 10 and what you need to do you need to find sum of those digit which is present in the number which is 0 and 1 so there is any way so that we can find the last digit or any digit yes there is so if you have watched my tcs playlist i solved this kind of number based question a lot so 10 mod 
if you ten if you mod ten, which is n here, and if you mod it by ten, what will happen? Zero will come, is it? Because ten times one will be ten, and it would be zero. But eventually, if you if you see twenty mod ten, it will end up giving you zero because uh, again ten times two is twenty. So any anything which is in tens, if you mod it by ten, you will end up having zero. But eventually, it is the last digit. Present in my uh, number, isn't it? So I get to know that if I use operator, I will get it. I will get the last digit. So I have figured it out. Okay, I will use the mod operation and find the last digit. Now, what is the thing? We just need to accumulate the sum as we are going on. So let's say my sum is firstly initialized as zero, and I, what I will do? Sum. Please accumulate. The digit that I found by modulation of those numbers. So yes, digit. So I will create this respective function, which would be the helper function, and it will keep on solving my answer. Okay. So this would be the straight way technique. So let's say let's say how you can solve this question. We directly coming on the code, which will be the pseudo code. You can implement in any of the language that you like to. Okay. So let's say function have a and b given to me, and what I do next is. Simple. Uh, first of all, I just need to find the digit sum of each number. So I will write it as digit sum of a. I will call my helper function, which will compute my digit sum of a. Okay. And similarly, I will write it as digit sum of b is equivalent to helper function. Please give me the digit sum of b. And as the question state, we have the digit sum of a and b, so we just need to return the product of it. So I will just write digit sum of a into digit sum of b. So this will return my answer, isn't it? So now I just need to write the code of my helper function, which will have the num inside. Okay, and I need to find the respective digit sum. Let's say my num would be. Equivalent to eleven. So now, what I can do? Now I want to take the each and every digit present in my number. So for doing that, I need to store somewhere my digits because we can't modify our actual num. Okay, otherwise, how you can make sure that all of the nums has been uh, gone? Or you can uh, do it as well because we don't. Need any num further, isn't it? Because we already uh, initializing here, so it is not a problem here. So what I will do here is I will just write my sum initialized to zero now. While my n is or my num is greater than zero, I need to continuously find my digit sum. So how I can find a digit? I told you here we need to find the modulus. So I will just write digit. Please give me the last digit possible for num. So okay, I found out that if I mod it by ten, I will get my thing back. Okay, so if it is eleven, eleven mod ten will give you one as a remainder. Isn't it interesting? Now, as we got the digit, question said to find the digit sum. Okay, I will find a digit sum. So I will keep on accumulate accumulating those. Now I need to make sure that the one, the one has been taken care of. Like it, it is one one. So I mod, I use modulus ten. To get the last digit of my number, it has been processed. Now I need to remove that. How I can remove that? If you think, if you think that, if you think in such a way that if you deal with integer, integer will never ever consist of decimal number. So what I will do? I will just do eleven divided by ten. It will become one point one. And if you are from Java and C plus plus, just initialize it by integer. It will give you one. So. Eventually, we remove the last number, isn't it? So just do as num divided by ten. So it will divide by num by ten as this is a pseudo code. So think like this is an integer, and it will and it will remove my last digit. And in the last, I will be getting my digit sum. So I just need to return my sum. Okay. So question has been done. I hope so. We will keep on finding the digit sum. For A, for B, and we are done with the solution, isn't it? So also this code will also take how much time? I think this will take n, where n is the size of A and n, which is the size of B. So it can take n plus m 
uh, time complexity as we are not considering any space because it is not at all required. Okay. So, let's hop for the third question. Okay. Third question of Deloit NLA exam. Now, the third question is also pretty similar, isn't it? Because in the question, they are just telling us they will be providing A and B in the following function. You need to apply this particular formula where the formula say that A times B subtraction of bracket A plus B. That we just need to do. So, if you do, if you fill your 3 and 12 inside this equation, you will get this equation which will be, uh, it will be 36 minus, it would be, uh, I guess, 15. So, if you, if you subtract 15 from 36, you will get 21, isn't it? Yes. So, this is the very simple and sober question that I don't think so, we need to do any further stuff. So, just simple, we have function of A and B where our value will be there and what next I need to do? I just need to either I will just return directly that A is multiplication of B or you can just mark it as bracket minus minus you need to provide and we have A plus B. It will give you the direct result. Okay. So, if you are writing in C++ Python Java, the code will be of hardly of two line. I hope you are able to understand this point of view. Okay. So, this question is also comes under the very easy which will hardly take one minute to solve this particular question. Okay. So, now let's hop on the fourth question. So, let's solve the fourth question. Okay. So, the fourth question is also very easy but in Deloitte exam, they ask this question in a very uh, confusing manner but not a e not an, uh, task because you're watching Pine Coding and we will be solving this question in a very easy manner. You just need to solve like in the question it say LS are going there, here and something but here what we need to focus here is we just need to check the rates chart. Okay, rates chart of each fruit which is mango and apple. We have 1, 2, 4, 6, 8 and whoever has the large number or more, more number of even rates that particular mango uh, or that particular fruit Alice will buy. I hope you are able to understand but not. Let's see. Okay. So, in mango, mango will be uh, denoted as M and apple will be denoted as A. So, in mango, I have 2, 4, 6, 8 as the even number present and here I have 6, 8 as even number of present. But I can see the occurrence of even prices in my mango is high. So, Alice will buy the mango uh, fruit and take her to her home. Okay. And take to her home. So, that is the very easy question that I can found. So, again, this question would be easily solvable if you know how to traverse and find the even count. Okay. So, in the function, they have given the mango array as well as the apple rates, both of the rates, okay. So, for that, what I need to do? Question said to find the even count. So, I will find the mango even or let me write a small because if I write too much, then it will be very hard to use and again and again. So, I will just write m even count, okay. And I will write a even count, okay. So, for that, I will create an helper function. Now, people do say, Aditya, do we need to create function? No. But creating function will give you the code clarity. Okay. So, for clarity always, my habit is to create the function if I need to perform a task again and again. Because I need to find even counts every time on each fruit basket or fruit rates. So, why don't I create an even uh, finding even function which will keep on count that same stuff. Okay. So, I will just pass my mango and I will just pass my apple rate start in the particular helper function. Now, I just say, if my m even count is greater than a even count, then just return that she will buy mango. Okay? Easy question. Else, return the apple 
but let's say if you take this question in another level and you find that the apple maybe apple don't have the even count inside so what you will do even count would be zero so is that the thing that uh, mango that the particular ls will buy the only the mango one no so it could be the same thing that if let's say apple doesn't have if say apple doesn't have an even count so let's say my apple has only our odd count so let me remove this so it will 319 so my apple will become zero and my even would be this so in that case as well it would it will be working isn't it because my apple count would be zero and this would be zero always think for the a uh, boundary cases because if you see the constraints okay they wrote everything clearly so i thought of to discuss which is a uh, I know, which is a hence proof thing, which would be definitely there if it had been zero. Definitely, we'll consider the mango. So yes, just without wasting time, let's hop to the helper function. Okay, so helper function looks very similar that helper of uh, we have uh, let's say fruit. Okay, we have fruit, and I just need to find the even. So I will write for element or for num, whatever you want to write, you can just write in fruit. Or anything that you can choose. As we are writing the pseudo code, and I don't think so. We need to have the codes in multiple languages because it is very easy and doable to write, isn't it? So for element and fruit, if my element mod two is equivalent to zero, which means it's even, so count plus equivalent to one, else or else in that case we don't need to do anything. Okay, and in the last we just need to in the last we just need to return my count and i just forget to initialize my count so count would be zero so my helper function will keep on counting the even numbers and it will be returning to every function so my mango will go here and my not will go here <laughs> let me trimmed okay so my mango so my mango call this uh, function and my count will give okay so you have in total 1 2 3 4 so it will give you have 4 and my apple will go and call the helper function now count will give you have 2 so i know that 4 is definitely greater than 2 and i will be and i will be returning the mango and apple so again the time complexity will remain of n because i iterating over both of the array so in the worst case it will only hit o of n okay so great so i hope so you got the intuition of all the programming question and all the very best for the rest of the shift you can share your coding question either on telegram or my insta or email email id you can find in the description below and i will tell you solving this question would be very easy but in the interview they will be asking some new set of questions so interview prep series would be launched very very soon so what you can do just watch my prep interview video which i recently uploaded where i mentioned all the most important topics okay so great so if you are looking for a mock interview for deloitte nla exam you can just go to www.primecoding dot in so that we can test your test you thorin because the session would be more than 60 minute we will we'll be covering your resume review your doubt solving session your hr question mr questions oops questions programming questions language based questions because there are multiple chunks that we told in this particular video where every important parts of the interview has been told so if you are lacking in the confidence prime coding is there to hold your back so you can just go to this particular website and change your career like anything okay so we'll meet you with a new video if you're watching till here please subscribe the channel like this video up and we'll meet you with a new slot video soon and whatever you need whatever doubts you have please comment down below so that we can solve till then take care bye bye